Hey everybody, I am doing this video by request. You had a classmate that wanted some assistance with getting crosstab chi-square information out of SPSS on their variables and into a results table. So I thought this would benefit more than one person and I'd share it widely with the class. So remember, for your results section, you are preparing two big statistics. One is a multivariate statistic, which is going to be one of two regressions, either the linear regression or the binary logistic regression. The other part of your results section is the bivariate test, two variables, and that will either be chi-square, ANOVA, t-test, or correlation, depending on the kind of information and measures that your variables have. Okay, so the chi-square test is when you have a dependent variable that's a categorical variable. Okay, um, and the independent variable can really be anything, but it's going to treat the responses on the independent variable as categories. Okay, so let's generate some output and populate a table. So I'm in SPSS, this is Add Health, and I'm gonna to go to the Analyze menu, go to Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. So we've done this before in labs three and six, if you need a refresher, but I've already put in my two variables. Now I recommend that you put your independent variable in the rows and your dependent variable in the columns. The only reason for that is it might be a little bit easier to pull the pieces out when you're trying to put it into a Word document template to keep things in that order. Otherwise, you can really put either variable in either place. You're gonna get the same information anyway, but for purposes of getting a table built, this might be a little easier. So in my research question, does gender predict being drunk at school? My independent variable is gender. My dependent variable is being drunk at school. Yes, no. So in this case, I'm gonna put gender in the row and being drunk in the column. And my, my biosex variable is there my H1JO10 variable, the being drunk variable is there. Before I hit OK, I'm gonna to go to the statistics option box and I'm gonna make sure that this chi-square box is selected because that's the statistic I would like to run, okay? It's the only thing I need to select here, click continue and click OK. So here we have some output of our question. The very first box is case processing summary that tells you how many people responded across these two questions. The next section is your cross tabulation that shows you the responses from gender across the responses from yes or no being drunk at school. And then underneath we actually have the result of the chi-square test that tries to predict the answers across all of those different cells and see if there's any statistical significance to that. Is what I expected, what I actually observed. And does knowing someone's gender actually help us get any better at predicting whether they're gonna show up drunk to school? We will find out. So first, let's start with a table template. So right here, I actually updated this template just to make things a little bit easier to kind of correlate with the example I'm showing you. So the first thing you want to do is jump in the template and start changing out things for your topics. So go ahead and go in the, in the title, and you have chi-square test and contingency 2x2 two two table, or 2x3 two table, or 2x5 table, however many categories your variables have. You're going to update that. And then you're going to put your two variable names in here at the end. For being drunk at school by gender, the way we present that is dependent variable first, being drunk at school, by gender, independent variable. So that's the order you want to do that table title. Once you have that done, then you can start changing out some of the pieces of the table itself. So in this column here, you put your independent variable, in this case, gender. And then we put the categories inside that variable which would be male, female, or, you know, for any other variable, be yes, no, or whatever those two categories or five categories are on the independent variable. Then we have frequency. That frequency corresponds to how many males and how many females we have. Okay, so that first column has to do with the count or total in each of the categories on the independent variable. The next column is the chi-square value, which we'll get to a little bit later. And then the next columns have to do with the category responses across the dependent variable. So here we see percent of people saying I was drunk at school, the frequency or actual count or number of people saying I was drunk at school. And then we have the frequency and percent of people saying I was not drunk at school. I answered no to that question. So essentially you have your yeses and your noes. You're gonna present both the count and the percent. And then here at the bottom, doesn't need a whole lot of editing, but these are just the notes that remind the reader, this is what we mean by how significant something is with how many stars it gets. And it says, you know, we might be rounding a little bit, 
Um, and these are comparisons because these are two category variables. The only thing you really need to update in this section is the sample size, the N, how many people are in there. And I'll show you how to get that information in a moment. So let's go back to the output. So right here, we're going to start with case processing summary, okay? So the first little valid cases missing total, this shows you, this is how many people answered both the gender question and the drunk at school question, 3,555. In this column, it says this is how many people had missing data across one or both variables, 2,949. And then finally, the total, this is how many people, the valid people that answered the questions plus the missing people we had to analyze or to work with, which was 6,504. The number you want to put in the table is the valid N of who answered both questions. So in this case, 3,555. So we're going to go ahead and put that into our table right here at the bottom. N equals 3555. Okay, it's a little footnote, very quick, easy to do. Now let's start by doing the frequency on the independent variable, gender. So right here in our cross tab section, we see yes, no, male, yes, no, female, and a total. The total at the end of the row is how many males we had to analyze. The total at the end of this row, how many females. So in this case, we had 1,758 males and 1,797 females. Let's go populate our table. So 1,758 and 1,797. Okay, so that part's done. Let's go ahead and look at the drunk stuff, okay? Which is over in here. So drunk at school is represented by this column. No, yes. So first we need to know how many males and females said, yes, I was drunk at school. So that's the second column over here. We had 245 males saying, yes, I was drunk at school, and 178 females that said, yes, I was drunk at school. So let's put those numbers into the next column. Okay, so percent and frequency. We're going to go to frequency. I believe it was 245. Yep, 245 yeses on the males. So that's going to go here. And I believe 178 on the females, which will go here. Now we got to go get the percents. There is a way you can get this in SPSS where you ask for cell and percent counts in some of the option boxes but it gives you a lot of different percents across a lot of different cells and it's a little confusing to read. So what I like to do is just go ahead and calculate them myself because it's faster and just easier to deal with. So I have my calculator and basically here you go 245 divided by 758 or 1758, excuse me. Let's try it again, 245 divided by 1758. 0.139 times that by 100, that's the percent of males that said yes. So now we can put that into percent. So 13.9% of males said, I'm drunk at school. Let's do the calculation for females. Okay, I already calculated the percent for females, and I decided just to kind of fast forward through things. It was 9.9%, so I did the number of females saying yes, I was drunk at school, divided by the total. So essentially, that's how you start populating this table. Then you're going to go across the next set of columns into the no's and say how many males said no, I was not drunk at school, 15, 13. How many females said no, I was not drunk at school, 16, 19. That's where those go. Those are the frequencies or the counts of people that said that. And then again, you're going to go ahead and calculate the percent of people that said that. And we'll do that quickly. Okay, so I finished calculating all the percents um, using, again, the numbers that we talked about. So I divided 1513 by 1758, and I was able to get 85.2% of males saying, no, I've not been drunk at school. And then the same thing for females, 1619 divided by 1797 gives me 90.1% of females saying, I've not been drunk at school. This should align up pretty well with those that said yes. Now again, we have some variation due to rounding, and I rounded up a little bit on the 90.1, okay? 
but roughly these 2% should total 100%, and these figures or counts should eventually equal the total. So 245 plus 1513 should be 1758, and 178 plus 1619 should be 1797. But now your reader can look across two categories on the independent and all these different categories on the dependent and see how many people responded in which way. And that's essentially the cross tab. Now we have to do the chi-square test. So that's the last piece of information we're doing here, which is at the bottom. So our Pearson's chi-square value is 13.77. So we're gonna put that into the table. Again, this is just a product of the equation. Doesn't mean a whole lot to us by itself, but the significance level is ultimately what we report. So we put that number in here. Now, when you look at the significance levels, okay, you wanna look right here. This is where your eyes go. Okay, we're gonna look at the Pearson's chi-square test and the asymptotic significance two-sided. Okay, so I have triple zeros. That's a good thing. That means it's highly statistically significant. So basically knowing your gender is highly predictive or highly associated with knowing if you're gonna show up drunk to school. And generally speaking, we can say males tend to show up drunk at school a little bit more than females do. So there must be something to do with males and drinking at a, you know, as school age or showing up to school that is going on that's worth further investigation. That's about all we can really say because the bivariate tests are very limited in the information they provide, but they do give us a sense of whether or not there's something going on between these two variables. So remember the chi-square test is a test of association. We don't say they are related, we say they are associated with each other. So the response on gender is associated with the response on being drunk at school. Knowing your gender can help me predict whether you're gonna show up drunk at school, because males tend to do it more than females. And we saw that in the actual counts and percents in that cross tabulation. So then we gotta figure out how many stars to give it. So again, you have a little cheat sheet right underneath here that shows you one, two, or three stars. So we have triple zeros, so anything at .001 or lower is gonna get three stars highly statistically significant. If it's at the 0.01 level, it's only gonna get two stars. On the 0.05 level, it'll get one star. If that number is anything larger than 0.05 or 5 hundredths, then it is too large to be considered significant at all, and it will get zero stars. We still report it, but essentially we can say we ran the chi-square test. These two variables ended up not predicting each other. There's no association. Moving on. So at the current time, we already have three stars. And this table is now ready to go in your results section. So you're done. That's how you put together a chi-square table based on results from SPSS. Let me know if you have questions and good luck.